Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be about collagen and ways that we can try to preserve the collagen that we already have and also encourage new collagen growth. So there are several ways to do that and I'm just gonna be focusing on the natural ways to do it. Most of you may know, or if you don't know, then um, I'm about to tell you that collagen is the most abundant protein in our bodies and it is really responsible for the strength and elasticity of our skin. It's found in the dermis. There's three layers to the skin. We've got the epidermis on top, the dermis in the middle, and then we've got a subcutaneous fat layer right underneath the dermis. So the collagen is actually in the thickest part of the skin and it's really responsible for just kind of helping to provide structural support for the epidermis. And whenever we start losing collagen, that's when we start seeing the first signs of aging fine lines, wrinkles, sagging, all that good stuff, the crappiness, you know, all the stuff that we all look forward to as we age. So one thing that I do wanna tell you, and this is so disheartening, but after age 20, we start to lose about 1% of collagen every year. I am 44 now, which means at this stage in the game, I have probably already lost about 24% collagen which, like I said, is very disheartening because it's responsible for the appearance of our skin. So it kind of becomes our job to figure out ways to mimic the ways that our bodies once behaved whenever they were younger. So what we want to kind of do is increase collagen production and decrease collagen degradation. So that's what this video is going to be about. I'm going to give you some ideas that you can kind of you know, burn to your memory and always think about whenever you're, I don't know, making certain choices in your life. And these are just ways, like I said, to help increase collagen production and preserve what we have. So let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with preserving the collagen that we already have. Now, I think that most dermatologists, if not all dermatologists, would say that sun protection is the absolute number one way to preserve your collagen. Unprotected sun exposure is probably one of the number one causes of premature aging. And so we really, really need to protect our skin because unprotected sun exposure leads to free radical damage and free radical damage leads to collagen degradation. So we need to constantly be protecting our skin and preserving the collagen that we already have. And one of the best ways to do that is to invest in a really good um, sunscreen, something that works with you know your skin type, something that wears well under makeup if you're a female and you wear it under makeup, and, um, and then just be very, very religious about putting it on. I have started something new because I <laughs> sometimes can get lazy about putting on my sun protection. So what I have done recently is I will put some sun protection in my hand and then I'll add my foundation to it and that's one of the things that I will lay on my face right after I've done all of my, you know, AM skincare. And then I might add some more foundation later, it just depends on what I have, you know, going for the day. But that is a really good way to kind of make sure that you always get your sun protection in. So first thing, sun protection. Another thing that we can do to naturally kind of preserve the collagen that we already have is to cut back on the sugar. Unfortunately, I know a lot of us have a sweet tooth, but sugar or the glucose in sugar can actually attach itself to collagen and really weigh it down. And when you have collagen that's weighed down, it becomes very stiff and inflexible, and that basically results in dry, dull, aging skin. So we really, really need to cut back on refined sugar if you want to preserve your collagen. So another way that we can really preserve the collagen that we already have is to stay hydrated. And that means externally as well as internally. Whenever your skin is hydrated, it really becomes a wonderful environment for collagen and elastin to just thrive in. So the best way to do that is obviously, if you're gonna do it topically, you're definitely gonna to want to invest in a, in a really good moisturizer that's really going to have a lot of humectants and emollients and occlusive agents to just really lock all the moisture in and create a barrier to protect your skin from you know environmental factors that can become a breeding ground for free radicals. So find a really good moisturizer that really agrees with your skin. Another thing that we need to do is um, always stay on top of drinking fluids, drinking water, you know, in particular. And that can be sometimes really hard for me, and I don't know why, but whenever you're dehydrated, it really shows up on your skin. In the first place that you'll typically notice that you're dehydrated is the skin around your eyes. Because the skin around our eyes is so thin, it really shows whenever we're dehydrated, and it shows up by looking really crappy, basically. So a lot of times, you know, when I'm dehydrated, I can tell right away by looking in the mirror because my eyelid skin just looks terrible. So it's very important to keep our skin hydrated 
from the inside as well as the outside. So drink your water. Okay, so the next thing that we can do to preserve the collagen that we already have is to get an adequate amount of sleep. And I know that is more easy said than done. That is easier, how do you say that? And I know that that is easier said than done, but it's very important because that is when our body kind of recovers rebuilds and repairs itself. Apparently, the key is to get at least seven to nine hours of sleep. If you are getting anything less than six hours of sleep, it's gonna show up in your appearance, unfortunately. They say that if you get at least one to three more hours of sleep, that you will see a difference in your appearance and in your skin the absolute very next day. And I completely, completely agree with that. There have been times where I'm like, I'm going to make a concentrated effort to go to sleep early tonight. I'm gonna turn off my electronics and I'm going to take my melatonin and make myself get some extra sleep. And when I do that, I look so much better the next day. Again, I see it most in my eye area. It's just such a reflection of the way that we're taking care of ourselves, you know, from day to day. The reason that sleep is so good for us is because your skin makes new collagen, but your body also releases growth hormone when you sleep. And so the longer you sleep, the more time, you know, your body has to repair itself and to rebuild tissue. So try to go to bed earlier, turn off your electronics, take some melatonin, and just make yourself get some sleep because it's one of the best things that you can do for your skin. Okay, so one of the next things that you can do in order to kind of increase collagen production is to find a really good collagen supplement that you like. And I have just, this is kind of new to me, I actually just picked this up maybe three weeks ago and it was a suggestion from one of my subscribers, not this particular brand. So I went out and I bought some and this is what I purchased and it's just liquid collagen and this was probably the cheapest. It's made by Nature's Truth and it says gorgeous hair, skin and nails. And I'll tell you something, ever since I've been taking this and like I said, it's only been three weeks, by the way, this tastes terrible. I mean, it is... <laughs> It's disgusting to me. So, you know, I'm probably gonna look for something that might taste a little better. But anyways, it includes vitamin C, it includes vitamin B6, pantothenic acid, and biotin, and then a thousand milligrams of hydrolyzed collagen. Now, another thing that I take is hair, skin, and nail pills. I have been taking, these aren't pills, they're gummies. I've been taking this for over a year now, probably a few years. Now, until I started taking this, my fingernails were still kind of weak. They would kind of bend and they would peel sometimes and stuff like that. After I started taking this, oh my gosh, my fingernails have been growing and they're so strong right now. And I've only been taking it for like three weeks. Aside from the taste, I feel like it's really doing a good job, especially with my fingernails. With my hair, I just really never notice a difference. But so these are kind of the supplements that I take, hair, skin and nail gummies, and then I also take liquid collagen and I also take vitamin C. Vitamin C is just one of the best things that you can put in your body to help with collagen production. So, so those are the supplements that I take in order to encourage collagen production. I think another one that um, I'm gonna be looking into is zinc. I remember reading something about zinc, so that's another one I'm gonna look into. One other thing that I do take is a woman's multivitamin and um, it's made by this exact company. The bottle looks exactly like this, but it's a, you know, just a daily, women's vitamin, but it also includes extra biotin. So right now I'm getting a lot, a lot of biotin because this has it and this has it and so does my multivitamin. So biotin, hydrolyzed collagen, and uh, vitamin C are wonderful things that you should be incorporating into your diet. Okay, so the last thing that I wanna talk about are different foods that we can include in our diet to really help preserve the collagen that we already have and encourage more collagen production. So the first couple of things that we can include in our diets are citrus fruits, and egg whites. Both citrus fruits and egg whites help amino acids to convert collagen, but egg whites also include a lot of collagen. They're high in collagen already. So eating citrus fruits and egg whites for breakfast, you're already gonna start building collagen first thing in the morning. The next thing that we can include in our diet or that we should be including in our diet, and this one's hard for me because I don't like these kind of foods, are fish that are rich in omega-3 fatty acids. And a couple examples are tuna and salmon. They're rich in omega-3 fatty acids and omega-3 fatty acids help create stronger cells by just protecting the cells. Another thing that we can include in our diet to help preserve collagen that we already have and also encourage collagen production is soy and berries, blackberries, blueberries, and raspberries. All of those are rich in antioxidants and antioxidants help to fight free radicals, but they also help to prompt the production of collagen. So add some berries to your soy yogurt, you know? And again, collagen preservation, collagen production. Another thing that we can include in our diet are dark leafy greens. Broccoli, 
kale. Both of those are very rich in vitamin C, and vitamin C is just known to encourage collagen production. Another thing that we can include in our diet are orange vegetables, like sweet potatoes and carrots. Both are rich in vitamin A, and as most of you know, vitamin A helps to restore and regenerate damaged collagen, as well as encourage more collagen production. So, orange vegetables. And then last but not least, and I think so many of you ladies are gonna love this, I know I do, if you have a sweet tooth and you are craving chocolate, reach for your dark chocolate. Dark chocolate is rich in antioxidants, and again, helps fight free radicals and helps promote collagen. So that pretty much concludes this video. As usual, I'm going to put a lot of information in my description box, so don't forget to check that out. So it's Friday. I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. I know I am. I'm going to have, I don't know, maybe a glass of red wine, only because it has resveratrol in it, which is good for anti-aging. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you next week.